Hey, how you doing? It's uh, This Week in Social Media, Rob Tursik here. And this week we're checking out some of the newest apps and some refreshes on old apps that you've seen before. Check it out. This week in social media, you know, there's so many apps and extensions and, and browser tools that you can use to enjoy social media, enjoy other kinds of content, and share it socially. We thought we'd take a look at a roundup of some of the most recent tools that have come out and also some of the old staples that everybody ought to have installed in their browser or use them on their phone. So we're going to do that today, but first, here's the news. And it's quite a week of news here, a lot of interesting stuff popping up. Uh, if we can go to my computer screen. First, this item that just popped up today on Business Insider. Uh, you know, there's been a lot of discussion about copyright recently with all the flap over SOPA and PIPA and now this bill over, uh, this uh, law being drafted in Europe called ACTA uh, about copyright. And one of the big issues here is that social sites enable people to share. That's no news to anybody who watches this show. But a lot of users are kind of blithely ignorant about what they're actually doing when they're posting content that isn't theirs. Now, most social sites uh, require you to click through at some point or another, or in the terms of service, uh, to agree to not post other people's content or content that you don't have permission to post. So the article today in Business Insider speculates that Pinterest, uh, the hot, fast-growing mobile startup that allows people to post and share images, is actually enabling copyright theft. Uh, and it does appear that they have a very, very, very weak defense. Uh, if, in fact, they're going to be hauled before a court. So check that article out. That's actually an interesting story. We'll certainly be covering this topic. Uh, interesting take on that. Now, news from Apple. This is about a new release of the operating system. This is OS X Mountain Lion. And they're, taking, they're, they're doing quite a few changes here. They're phasing out the word Mac. So this is clearly a signal uh, that the, it's the end of the kind of computer, desktop computer era. And in fact, uh, this new release, this new operating system, will be much more like the iPhone. So it's kind of the, uh, it signals the transition that we're in right now, which is the end of the desktop era and the rise of the mobile era. My personal take on this is that this is really a slipstream release to sort of bolster um, the fumbled release of OS X Line. If you're like me and you've attempted to upgrade your computers to Line, you probably have experienced some really difficult challenges. Sometimes it hangs, sometimes apps don't work very well. Uh, the computer can hang or crash, perform slowly under certain circumstances. And it's a little bit of a mystery, and there's certainly a lot of patches that are uh, being slipstreamed down to bolster that. But it looks like they're going to be blowing out a lot of those old remnants that have been slowing things down. And Apple's going to be cutting off a lot of old computers as well with this release. So those computers will be consigned to the past. They won't be eligible for this upgrade. So Apple moving us more towards that mobile era with a new operating system called OS X Mountain Lion. Now, this piece was posted this week on Cringely, I Cringely, a terrific blog, one of my favorite tech blogs. It's about YouTube. Uh, now, there's been a lot of chat about YouTube. And we had last week a guest on the show who talked to us about uh, their great success on YouTube. And I'm talking about Aaron Debevoise from Machinima. So YouTube has been rocking it lately. They serve in half the video on the internet. All these amazing statistics that they've released on the YouTube blog. But now here's Cringely saying that actually there's a lot of click fraud happening in YouTube that a lot of those incredibly high view counts that you've seen are the work of click fraud. Um, now, there's a really interesting echo in this story. Back to the early days of Google, when Google was just starting to experiment with pay-per-click advertising, click fraud was rampant, and Google needed to take a drastic action to restore advertisers' confidence that people were actually looking at those ads, that it wasn't just some robot that was clicking. Now today, YouTube's trying to do the same thing. What's behind this story is that YouTube is now striving for legitimacy. They clearly have a dominant position as the leading provider of video on the web, but they're way under monetized. If you take a look at, U at Google's financials, uh, YouTube is managed separately, and YouTube uh, does not come anywhere close to commanding the kind of CPMs, uh, the kind of prices that they can get from advertisers with great quality video. Uh, and they do have a, an increasingly large chunk of great quality video that they could be selling at higher prices. But what, to do, what they're going to need to do in order to command those prices is guarantee their advertisers that they're making every effort to clear out click fraud. And so if you read that article from Cringely, you'll get a good sense of what's happening there. More news for gamers, uh, for folks who like social games and mobile games. Angry Birds, Angry Birds in Space. Check this out. Here's the trailer. We're going to go full. This is the Angry Birds in Space trailer. One quantum leap for bird kind. 
coming out in March 22. Not much, uh, not much revealed there for us. We're going to have to be in suspense but for just about a month or so, and then we'll get to see what they've got for us next. And now here is an interesting story that was posted, on, uh, posted broadly on the web. Here it is on, on uh, PCMag.com. Lawmakers are now hauling the Department of Homeland Security in for inquiry for congressional investigation as they are now starting to wonder why the FBI is trawling through our Facebook posts and our Twitter feeds. Uh, and so they're wondering how this actually is going to help, in, uh, help restore security in the United States. Uh, it seems like it's a little bit intrusive. We brought that story up a couple of weeks back here on the show. And we'll continue to monitor it here, but you have this breaking news this week that actually finally people on Capitol Hill got the message about social media and government intrusion and government monitoring. This has been a practice overseas, and here in the United States we tend to think that this is something that only occurs overseas. We tend not to think that our government is using social software as a tool to pry into our lives, but of course it's available to the government. And not so long ago, the Department of Homeland Security and the FBI announced that they were actually having a plan. They put out an RFP, a request for proposal for companies to help them create tools to monitor social media streams. And there was quite a bit of a ruckus around that. Civil liberties groups were objecting to it, and now it looks like their complaints were heard. And they're now being addressed by our representatives on Capitol Hill. So good for them. Let's keep an eye on this story as it evolves. Now today what we're going to do is we're going to talk to you about some apps. There's just been an enormous explosion in the recent months, both uh, apps for mobile phones and apps for, you know, apps for uh, other types of devices, and of course, your computer and your browser. And so uh, I've asked my friend Sam to join me here in the studio. Hi, Sam. Welcome to the show. Hey, Rob. How's it going? Good to be back again. It's good to have you. Sam is our producer, so he's with me every week, uh, usually off screen. He's the guy who wrangles our guests and wrangles everything else that needs wrangling around here. Um, but this week, he's wrangling a few apps. What do you, what'd you bring in for us this okay, week? Okay, I got two that I really like and cool. one that I don't like very much. Um, <laughs> one that I thought that was really cool is Voyeral. It's, a, um, it's an in-browser app. It comes with this little widget um, that you can see up in the top left hand of my screen. Yeah. What it does is it just kind of takes everything that everybody's talking about and it, it matches it with your browsing patterns. Oh, that's pretty cool. And so presents it's, it's you with stuff that think you it thinks that you would like. And what it does what it does is actually really really good. Um, you can this is order a, this extension for Chrome or for Firefox? Either both. Okay. They have um, they have it for Safari, Chrome, and Firefox. Voyeral. So it's yeah. V O Y U R L. Yep. Okay. Um, and there so you can customize it based on what's hot today and it will go by your browsing levels or, and it also you can adjust it by your feed. Um, what are the numbers on the left? The 100, the 86, and all that? That's the number of people that are talking about it. It's just sort of how it's its rank in terms of how the web is talking about these. And so, what do you topics. plug in? Did you plug in your Facebook, your Twitter, or what else? Um, I actually logged in through my Facebook. Okay. Um, and because that's. I wanted to give it the best chances based on your browsing history, and the oh, the only downside of it is it is kind of an installable app, mm -hmm. um, and so it takes a while for it to build from your browsing history. Right. It takes a while to learn your habits. Oh, okay. It, so but if you that log time in, is shortened based on if you which more platform friends. you use the most. I see. So I use Facebook the most. I tweet three times a day usually at mm -hmm. most, um, but I'm on Facebook a lot more than that. And so I use that in order to kind of jump start it. And it's actually. Can, can you do both? Can you log in with both sure. Twitter and Facebook? Oh, so you could. And yeah, then, you and can actually double, log double in and you can log in from multiple platforms. It will give you the option to, if you want to give it your Facebook, your Google Plus, your Twitter, oh, cool. your LinkedIn account, you can give it all of that. And then its results that's are That's even really better, good. right? Because that's like a consolidated stream, which I've been looking for. Because candidly, who's got the time to check out three totally di separate, totally different streams? Exactly. So that's. Um, Voyeral. That's what Voyeral does. That's what Voyeral does. Cool. And it's also similar, in essence, to Feedly, but Feedly is a little different. Feedly is the next thing that I want to talk about. This is yeah. the other one that I really like. Cool. The thing that I like most about it is how pretty it is. Yeah, it's you know, nice looking. It's a beautiful site, and they have so you basically what you do is you go through this page, and it'll have all of these different outlets that you'll see around here, and yeah. you just kind of pick and choose. 
what you so, want. So what is it? What is it showing me right now? Tell me what we're looking at, because okay, I what you're looking at is my Feedly. Yeah. Um, and what I'm doing right now is customizing the content that I want to have delivered to. Yeah. So I see Apple photography. So these are topics. What's yeah. underneath it? What are the links that's showing there? Those are the stories, or those um, are the yeah. Sources? So these are the stories. So let's go into it. Say you want to have a, your feed optimized for cinema. Yeah. So we'll go in there. And it'll give you, it delivers from all these different content providers, yeah. these different articles. And you can add these into your Feedly in terms of their own, in terms of the own article, but it'll also aggregate other articles like it that it thinks that you'll be interested in reading. Um, and the other cool thing that it does is it gives you links to Amazon. It just presents your interests in yeah. a very organized, very pretty way. Um, the downside of it is you can kind of tell where they're getting their content from. It's it's aggregated, I guess, through partnerships um, because it it shows only content from a few different outlets. Mm -hmm. Like they have The Verge, they have Engadget, they have TechCrunch, but. Oh, so it's a little limited in terms of its sources. Exactly. It's limited uh, in terms yeah, of its sources. That's a little bit boring. Okay. Um, the good news is their sources are very prominent. You know, on the, so right now I'm in my tech, uh, I'm in my tech uh, space on mm -hmm. my Feedly, and so we have Verge, Engadget, TechCrunch, Mashable. You know, the stuff that you'd be checking, Next Web, the stuff that you'd be checking every day anyway. Okay, so this is like your newspaper. This is your feed of the yes. stories that are breaking from the, the publications that you actually already are interested in. Exactly. And so it's filtered through your friends and, and your Twitter and Facebook, and so it's, it's a little bit of a streamlined feed. It's a little better than RSS that way. It's a streamlined feed. It's better than RSS. It's a lot better looking than RSS. Right. And the other good thing is, so when I go to my Feedly, um, again, this is something that I download, and it's a widget that has to get populated. Mm -hmm. So instead of having to go to all those different sites, see on the right hand it says my featured sources. These are the ones that I've you know picked. It'll then just display them all in a nice place. So instead of having to go through all those different sources, it brings them all, and it will update them constantly. So it's actually a pretty it's a pretty nice tool, and its presentation is really good. And the more you use it, mm -hmm. you can actually set it to monitor your browsing history for how often you visit those different sites, and it will be feeding other content that it gives really good content suggestions to you. you okay, know? cool. So I, I really like that. Um, well, which one would you use more? So you looked at Voyeral and you looked at Feedly. So Feedly, Feedly is a better way to scrub your feeds, right? That's really what you're doing. So yeah. Feed um, and they're but they're a little bit different. Voyeral is a lot broader in scope. Feedly is is designed primarily towards content. Mm -hmm. Voyeral will do kind of anything. It, it's, it's and Voyeral what, looked like a it looked like a typical news feed in the sense it was like a bunch of headlines. And they were kind of refreshing from the top, depending on how hot, how many, the heat map around the story, right? It's true, but that it's not necessarily just for content. It's also topics. Um, oh, Voyal right. does better with just kind of what's going on in the web okay. or what's going on in the world. It's not just content. Feedly is aggregating the content that you want to be getting. So it's just news. Yeah, well, it's and news stories. and blogs, stories, um, video. Cool. It, it will give you video, but it's more, de they're, they're designed kind of for different things. Right on. Um, Voyal okay. is kind of like, hey, what's going on right now in all the spaces that I'm interested in? Mm -hmm. And Feedly is, hey, where are all the content that I'm interested in? Just bring it all into one place and let me just read it all. And instead of having to go to 10 or 12 different sites every day, you just plug them all into your Feedly and it'll feed them to you. Right on. You know what? Let's switch over to my computer. I'm going to take a look at one. This reminds me of an app that I've been using since, boy, since I got Firefox. So this is at least five or six years. Oh, this Stumble is uh, StumbleUpon, which recently went through a refresh. So this, uh, the company StumbleUpon, it, it got acquired. It became kind of uninteresting. Then the uh, then the management bought it back out again, and now StumbleUpon's been refreshed and relaunched. And actually, it's pretty cool. Uh, there's one feature that I've always loved, and you you gotta love. Once you set up your interests, it's the random stumble button, which just brings you random stuff on the web. You click that. So this is like late at night when you're bored and you want to check something out, oh, cool. you just hit the stumble button and based on your interests and what other people have bookmarked, you're going to see a random selection of the web, what other people found interesting and you just have to hit that one button. I love this feature. To me it's like channel surfing the internet. 
All right, that's can, cool. And I can channel surf it through the interests of different people. So if I wanted to go into a particular topic or a particular subject, like sometimes I'm looking at graphic design or look at animation or something, then I can stumble through those specific categories. Can you choose what person you want to see you, what you they totally stumbled can. on, so like you among can, your friends? Yeah, I can I stumble like, my friends' interests. I can stumble oh, my really connections. Cool. And I can also go into like YouTube and stumble YouTube videos, which is a great way to find stuff. So the more you use it, it has that simple TiVo-like thumbs up, thumbs down interface. So the more you tune it, the more you actually say, I like this or I don't like this, better then the better it's going to get at recommending stuff. And I find it's still the best for that one thing. Uh, it's also a social bookmarking. So like all the things we're looking at, it's a way for you to tag stuff and, and bookmark it and save it for later and so forth. But there, you get this additional benefit of the random recommendations based on your interests cross yeah. matrix across other people like you. That was really cool. I like that one. I'm glad you dug it. OK, no, good. Th those apps are sweet. Now, there's one app that everybody has to have. If you don't have, uh, you're, you're missing out in a big way. This is a very fundamental thing. It's not news Evernote, but it just keeps getting better and better. And I recently upgraded all my computers, and I found that this is just such a great way to synchronize stuff across computers. So what Evernote Clipper lets you do, if you install it in your browser, you can use it in Firefox. I've got it here on Chrome. Uh, Evernote Clipper lets you clip the whole article. And as you can see right now, uh, here I'm looking at team building and brainstorming activities. And these are I'm grabbing the whole content of the web page. It's way better than bookmarking. And I can set up different types of uh, different type of, of book of, ca of notebooks here. These are ways to organize stuff um, in ca in categories. So, for instance, I'm always interested in the future of media. So I've created this really awesome uh, notebook, and I can share that. And so Ever Evernote allows you to save the stuff that you're reading in a way that's handy. You can synchronize it across multiple machines. And yes, I've got it on my tablet and I've got it on my phone. And then I can share the link with you. So what this is really great for is um, a lot of times I'm working on collaborative projects with people who I'm not always with. It'll be by phone, people who are in sometimes other countries. So this is a great way for me when I'm browsing the web and looking at stuff and reading the things, you know, maybe looking at the stuff from the various feeds. We need feeds. to start using that to prep for this show. Absolutely because right. Because we're always sending each other like 10, 12 links throughout the week like, hey, did you see this? Did you see this? In email. From now right? on, In email. Send, me, send me your Evernote. And, uh, and, and it's way better because you're actually grabbing the whole thing. So it can be a photo, it can be a video, it can be a story, it can be a blog post. And uh, it makes it very easy to organize because you can organize it, tag it, and so forth. So if you really want to curate it and groom it, you can do. That's Evernote. But that's you know, nothing new there. That's just a great, solid performer. Really runs well. They've got a desktop version that you can install. They've got the browser extension you can install. And they've got mobile editions. Ready to bash one? Yeah, let's hear one that's right. not working the so one hot. So the list that you sent me, I liked almost all of them, except for there is this one. Um, Addictomatic, which is up on my screen right now. Mm -hmm. And it claims to be something that instantly creates a custom page with the latest buzz on any topic. The problem is, is it doesn't work very well. OK, so here, let's try this. Um, hot topics. Those don't change. I've logged into it about five <laughs> times throughout the week. They must be really hot. No, it's so funny. <laughs> they don't change, and here's why. Because uh, let's try doing something that they think. Obama. Fantastic. OK. So it brings up good news on Twitter. All the Bing news is good. The Google search is good. When YouTube, you say good, you mean it's bringing relevant results. Yeah, it's bringing relevant results, All right. trending results. And that's why they were suggesting. The reason why I started to really dislike this thing was so is the, other, the other day, there was like that 5.5 earthquake up in Reading. Yeah. And my parents live in NorCal, and I wanted to make sure everybody was OK, and they didn't answer their phone. And it was like right after they announced it. I didn't know how bad it was. So I looked up earthquake. Oops. Well, now it's, OK, they'll have one thing, two Vallejo quakes, Felton Berkeley. But then lower recovery, like oh, so their, their filters now they're work. Look at, OK, so their YouTube videos, they have obviously, you know, like it, it's just, it's really random and not. It's random. It's not yeah. coherent. So it works. It works OK mm -hmm. with stuff that obviously everyone's talking about that would be so easy to find anyway. Right. So but you don't you, need a filter for that. When you go off that. any topic that is, you know, not absolutely destroying that, even the, watch, like Lady Gaga. Like, OK, something that should be just crazy big. You know, it, like the Google result search is OK. Yeah. But then there was like headphone-related collisions. And you know, it, it, it comes up with a lot of hmm. 
like weird random stuff, stuff that's, that's just not, not quite really on. good. So it's giving you recommendations, recommended stories that don't really match what you're interested in. So they're cert they haven't matched their search uh, with their filter quite right yet. No. Do you think it's something that might get better over time? I mean, I don't want to bash these guys. No, if, no, no. no. I, I, it could. It definitely could. The only question is, will it be able to compete with? There's a lot of. For, here's what it doesn't do for me. Um, one thing it does do well is it integrates the Twitter search. It gives you a lot of different sources to look at very quickly, which I like. Yeah. You know, you can be looking through WordPress. You can be looking. At, it gives you YouTube. I'm sure their algorithms will improve. You know, they're gonna get better. They're gonna get smarter. But for right now, for getting information that I want, it doesn't really improve. A regular Google search for me yeah, that much. Yeah, got it. So, it, so for the trouble of setting it up and tuning it, you're not going to get enough benefit. Which, by the way, that's an issue with a lot of these apps. I have to say, we get recommendations all the time. People are constantly sending me stuff saying, "Check out my cool new social thing." You know, there's a little bit of a learning curve on each one of these. There's the hassle of setting up your profile. There's a little bit of effort, you know, required there. And then you also have to kind of learn how the tool works or what it's really good for. Uh, sometimes it's not worth the half hour it takes to set it up and really get into these things. You find Wow, for all the effort, it wasn't really that big of a payoff. That's a big issue for these kinds of apps, and it's actually worth taking a minute to write a review if you if you install one and you find it's not that great. It's true, and I also think that this space, this kind of aggregation space, is really crowded. Oh my and gosh! Like you know, and if it doesn't work well, immediately, immediately, right? That's that's the big problem for them. You know, yeah. like this space, everybody, there's so many tools that are doing this, so many different yeah, plugins, widgets, totally all that stuff. Every month there's a new magazine reader app on the iPad, right? It started out like Flipboard was incredible when it came out. Then Broadfeed came out, and that was really good. Now it's Zite. And I notice everybody who I talk to is moving from one to the next. So everybody's checking these things out and trying them out. I haven't quite figured out how any of them make money just yet. So they're kind of like a, a presentation. On How top of money? feeds, that's actually a really interesting well, question. Did they just soon? They're, what they're doing is aggregating interest, right? And they're matching it against stories. Now, if you're the publisher, well, you've already got advertising that you yeah. think is tuned to the person who's reading that. So, are they going to put an ad in front of your ad? Are they going to replace your ad? This is the question, and and it's a real issue, right? This is where back in the day, the Huffington Post got smacked down because the major newspapers said, "Hey, what, you guys aren't an aggregator, and you're not really a digest. All you are is a vampire. You're yeah, like you're a just remora. taking our contact <laughs> and hoovering." <laughs> exactly. It up. So, you know, they got big enough at the Huffington Post where it didn't matter because then they could hire writers. They have now got hundreds of writers on staff. And they become their own thing, and you know AOL is serving their ads. So they've they've kind of piggybacked right. off of traditional media. Not a bad approach, right? Because in the early days, when there's an explosion of content on any platform, then digests actually make good sense because there's, there's no one's got enough time or attention to go sorting through all these different sources. So we actually want a service that'll filter it. But right now, yeah, what you've got is a proliferation of curation apps, and you really need a weed whacker to get out there. It's good if you check one out and you don't like it, if it's not working the way it's supposed to. It's actually good to make noise about that. Let me show you one here where I was really disappointed. Here's an app. Everybody I know is like, you got to check out Gimme Bar. You're going to dig it the most. It's going to help you organize your life on the web. So I went to the trouble to download and install the thing, and then I got some crazy notification that said, oh, you have to go into your Chrome preferences and set all these different preferences and give us permission. And I started going into it, and I just said, you know what? I don't have the time or the interest. So sorry, Gimme Bar. I'm definitely interested to check you guys out, but you got to make your installation process a lot simpler. Now let me show you a new thing that I think is pretty cool. Uh, this is one that I've just started using today, and I think it's a really neat thing. It's called Hangout Canopy. This is just the page where you install the app. But here, check this out. So it's actually up here. I've installed it in the browser. And so I click on that, and it shows me what's going on inside of Google+. These are now live Google Plus Hangouts that I can join. So these are the publicly available ones. So you can just click there, and I can get into them. And of course, other people are broadcasting from inside of Google+. And so now I can see what is now live on Google+. This was an essential thing that's been missing. There was no easy directory for Google+, Hangouts. And Hangouts, as you know, is one of the coolest features that, on Google+. I was going to say, that's the thing that's kind of going to let, I think that that's the big thing that's going to let them compete in Oh, I think it's an awesome, awesome differentiator. There's so the, if the you're hangouts. driving Chrome, go get the, uh, go get the Google+, Plus Hangout Canopy. It's called Hangout Canopy. And it's an app that allows you to tune in and find all the current Hangouts that are going on that are publicly available through your, you know, your network of friends and, and, uh, and the public broadcast as well. So this is definitely a cool thing, and I dig it. I would like to see it. I have a question for you. Um, when do you think there's going to be a really smart 
good video aggregator? Because I know right now doing searching through video is tough because Google search doesn't obviously know what an image is. Oh, you know what? I and can I can actually do that. I'll do this. This is uh, here we go. This is gonna be a live. Oh, I'm gonna key this one in live. So uh, right, because that's something that I want to see. Right now, there's not. I I have yet to see a really elegant, really good video finder. Oh, in fact, we should bring these guys on. So check this out. This is Frequency. I am crazy about this company. If you have an iPad, you've got to check out their iPad app. Um, I have not yet set it up on this computer, but you can see I can log in with Facebook or I could sign up directly here. So this is an interface. If you look at it, you'll say, gee, that interface looks an awful lot like the interface for, um, well, Broadfeed, you know, these uh, yeah. iPad, tablet type things. But what's behind it is video. And what these guys have done, the hard problem they've solved is that they've figured out all the different sites on the internet that have video. And a lot of them have totally different codecs. So some are streaming in one format, some are streaming in another format. And there's no one player that makes it possible to look at all those. So typically your experience would be that you go from site to site and you're going to have to like, you know, have the right player installed to look at the video for that particular site. There's never been one TV guide that allows you to tune them all in at once. Frequency solves that problem. Frequency is the TV guide for all the video on the web, which is, I think, a fantastic thing to solve. So that's a very cool thing. If you're on the web and you're looking for what to watch tonight and you don't know where to start, go to Frequency.com and check it out. We, we should get those guys on the show because I right. think this thing is awesome. It's a heroic engineering effort to figure out how to do I was going to say because that that is the big problem with search. Oh, yeah, this is cool. I'm going to get it. Like and the it. iPad app is totally slick. They just came out with that at CES, and it generated a lot of buzz. All right. And you can see they've got trending stuff. And then once you plug in your social, then it starts to filter everything by social recommendations. And you can let your can friends you know in, what you're watching as well. Can you log in like with your YouTube account so it'll know like what you like yeah, to watch on I'm, YouTube? I'm sure there's ways to tune all of that. Okay, that's cool because yeah. that's the that's the content aggregation that I think needs to fix because you know, Twitter's like it's like you said the other day. Twitter's good for knowing See. what the net is doing now. Um, Google's great for knowing like the big trends and also what was happening. You know, a, it was the state of the web you know a couple months ago because it takes a while for their spiders to grab onto stuff. Right. But there's a reason why you see a lot of talk shows will have like you know their transcripts and stuff posted below the video. It's not just so people can cut into it. Right, them. it's for it's search. So, for, so yeah. search engines can grab so there's, onto There's it. two problems with that, right? It takes about three months for stuff to show up to truly get spidered and show up in the search engine. So Google's like a rearview mirror for the web. It shows you what's happened, but it doesn't really show you what's happening now. And Twitter, historically, Twitter's been much stronger at what's going on right now. But for video, there hasn't been a really one, great one-stop shop, at least not one that I've found. Is so it, what's cool, so is the what's cool about thing. frequency is if you if you go in and set it up, which I have not yet done, but if you go in and do that, I haven't done it on this on this computer, um, you're going to get the feed from your Facebook, from your Twitter, so across your social accounts, and then it filters all the stuff that's happening on the web, and then it brings in recommended and relevant content against that matrix. So it's a really great experience. It's like your one-stop shop for all the new video on the web. And I find I can spend hours there because I'm seeing all kinds of different video. And by the way, they support the companies that they're showing, the video where they're showing it, because they're, they're allowing you to see the pre-roll ads or the post-roll ads and so on. So they are very pro-publisher in their business. Oh, that's but, cool. Yeah, it's a smart approach so that way they're going to have the support of and everybody. they won't get ripped down by the other people. They're not going to get blocked. People are going to want them to pick up their clips and show them because it's going to get more people aware and drive more attention to it. So it's just like TV Guide. I think it's a really cool idea and um, and I haven't even begun to scratch the surface on this one. That's something okay, I'm really so excited about. Okay, so remember 10 minutes ago when I said I like 4-year-old and I like Feedly? Yeah. This is my pick. Right on. Okay, uh, so Frequency looked, is my winner. We just looked at a bunch of apps that people should know about and use. Some old staples like StumbleUpon and Evernote, very practical, fun things to use. Some new ones like Voyerl, that's V-O-Y-U-R-L. URL. And Feedly. Feedly is great. Um, everybody should definitely go to, just go to Feedly.com, download their, their stuff. It, it's, it's really pretty and it works really well. And they do have an iPad app. And then for video, if you want to check out Google Plus Hangouts and find out all the publicly available broadcasts and Hangouts that are there, check out uh, uh, Google Plus uh, Canopy, and, or Hangout Canopy, rather. And then for video on the web, across the web, uh, matrix across your social feed, we recommend Frequency.com. 
And be sure to pick up the iPad app for that as well. All right, so that's what we've got this week. It's been a lot of fun doing this. We use these tools constantly. So for us, it's almost like an incoming tidal wave every single week of new things to check out. But these are ones that we actually have used and rely upon, or new ones that met our filter, you know, came across our, our horizon. We thought they were pretty cool ones to share them with you. We definitely want to hear from you. So if there's an app that you use, if there is a social tool that's out there that you use, that you find incredibly useful, be sure to let us know. A Twitter handle, TWI Social Media. You can email us anytime at TWI Social Media at thisweekend.com. TWI Social Media at thisweekend.com. That's like a really short email address and easy to remember. Joke. Anyhow, we'd love to hear from you. I appreciate every single email that I get, every message that I get, and all the shout outs that we're getting elsewhere across no, the social web. we're loving it. And the last few weeks have been great. People, the response has been huge. So thank you guys so much for right you know, talking to us. That's cool. Uh, next week, I'm going to be on the road, so I won't be here to do a show. Instead, what you're going to get is a glimpse of a speech that I did recently at Simon Mainwaring's event. You'll remember Simon was a guest on our show. Uh, he's the guy who created We First, which is a social branding agency, and it's also a best-selling book, and now it's a conference. And so Simon invited me to join him at the conference to talk a little bit about the future of social media. And I got real political, uh, so we're going to have a cut version of that next week. So check it out. Don't miss it. And then I'll be back. I'm going over to Europe, over to Europe to be at the big Barcelona 3G uh, mobile conference over there. And when that's done, I'll be back in the saddle and we'll have more social media for you. All right. Take care. <laughs>